Okay, so we are finishing out this semester uh, to introduce you to nursing pharmacology. I'm going to do three short recordings of information to get you started on it because this summer you will get in Pharmacology 1. Pharmacology will be split up into Farm 1, Farm 2, Farm 3. Majority of information is covered in Farm 1 and 2, and Farm 3 is kind of pulling it all together and getting into the critical drugs and application with your patients. So anyway, introduction to pharmacology. Nurses' responsibility, administering the drug, assessing drug effects, intervening to make the drug, make the drug regimen more tolerable, providing patient teaching about drugs and drug regimen, monitoring overall patient care plan to prevent medication errors. So administering the drug. You the nurse needs to be aware of, have an understanding of the drugs, how they work, the effects they have on the body, to be able to teach the patient about it, to know when to give it with food, not to give it with food, when it may or may not be appropriate to give that dose, uh, whether the order is an appropriate dose, appropriate drug, is there something going on with the patient that maybe you should question it or call the healthcare provider, the prescriber, to ask about it. The uh, pharmacology is the study of the biological effects of chemicals. And drugs are chemicals that are introduced into the body to cause some sort of change. Healthcare providers are focusing on how the chemicals act in, in the human, in the person they're administering to. So nurses have to deal with the pharmacotherapeutics, or how the drug is used to treat, prevent, and diagnose disease. Some drugs are therapeutic or helpful, and other drugs might cause undesirable or potentially dangerous adverse effects. Drug development. It goes through several phases before their, the Federal Drug Administration, or FDA, says we can use it. There's preclinical trials where they tested on laboratory animals. Phase one, they tested on human volunteers. Phase two, the drug is tried with informed patients with the disease. Phase three, it's used in, in a large clinical market. And then phase four, continually evaluating the drug once it's out there. It, once it's out there, there's a patent on the drug. And when the patent wears off, then you will have generic drugs come out. Might be familiar with some of this. It keeps coming up right now with all the COVID going on and what we can treat and what we can't treat and trying to come up with the vaccine and you know the current regimen of giving um, hydroxychloroquine and erythromycin. I'm not erythromycin. Azithromycin combination. And because there haven't been clinical trials to prove it and gone through all the phases, but the White House has managed to push it through because of the, uh, so the emergen FDA has given an emergency approval, which I've never seen before, but that's where we are. So the drugs are developed, but they've not been um, gone through the trials to for the specific treatment plan. Safety during drug administration. For a long time it was A, B, C, D, and X. I still tend to use that terminology. It's just easier. You know, they changed several years ago over to these categories. Current label, new labeling with this 8.1 and 8.2 and 8.3. A lot of things I see still have the A, B, C, D, X. A is fine with anything B is um, in animals first trimester. There doesn't seem to be any evidence of a risk. C, there's some adverse effects on the fetus in animals, but no well-controlled trials in humans. Category D, there has been some fetal risk evident 
in in humans but there's times when the benefit outweighs the risk category X it's definitely fetal abnormalities and do not do not clearly give during pregnancy so when I talk about benefit and risk I don't think I have that on a slide benefit and risk every drug has a benefit and every drug carries some sort of risk some risk are higher than others you come to a point where you have to weigh out as a healthcare provider benefit and risk ratio so sometimes you're going to give the drug even though there's a risk like they might give a category C or D in a pregnancy if not giving the drug will cause more harm than the potential risk of giving the drug Uh, this is more information just on pregnancies, clinical considerations, fetal risk summary. I'm not going to go into that more. There's also on lactation, that's breastfeeding, whether or not it's safe to give in lactation. That's They have to see if the drug does pass into the human milk. If it passes in the human milk, then it goes into to the fetus. So sometimes it's what they call a uh, pump and dump. I don't know if you've heard that terminology, probably have in your maternal child, pump and dump. They are on certain drugs, they're lactating, so within a few hours of the drug, the next, next time they're gonna breastfeed, they have to pump and dump it, or if they're gonna be on a medication for seven days during that period of time, pump and dump and give the baby something else. Sometimes if they're planning for a procedure, they might pump the breast and save the breast milk. So during the period of time when they have to pump and dump, the baby can get the breast milk. Anyway, so there we go. There's the FDA and the DEA. So the FDA is the General Safety Standards in Foods and Drugs, Food and Drug Administration. The DEA is the Drug Enforcement Agency, so they're over the controlled substances, or we call scheduled drugs. So scheduled drugs, often called controlled substances, they come in a schedule of five. Five is the uh, least dangerous or addictive there are some drugs that have landed on a Schedule 5 that didn't used to be controlled. Uh, one is gabapentin or Neurotin. It is a drug that is actually an um, anti-seizure drug, anti-neuroleptic, that has many other uses for pain control, pa nerve pain management, and unfortunately, it started to get abused by people, so it landed on the scheduled or controlled, which is Schedule 5. We administer in, in the public Schedule 2, 3, 4, and 5. Schedule 2 are the very addictive, um, like the, the narcotics. Schedule 1, we do not give it has no medical purposes, so it's scheduled two through five. This is just to give you an idea of terminology information. Again, I said this is introduction to pharmacology. As, as you get into pharmacology and talk about drugs, these will come up again and again, but this is to get you familiar with the terminology and uh, so when you hear it, you have an idea and something to build on. Okay. So generics and brands. The generics are much less expensive simply because the brand manufacturers, the person that came up with the original drug, did all the trials, got the patent, paid all the money for all the levels of clinical, clinical trials, so it costs more money. The generics come along and they don't have to pay for these trials. The trials have been done, the drug has been approved, it's been out there for a while, the evidence is out there, so generic company comes in and they can now take, because the patent is expired, 
and they can use the um, all that information and formulate the drug. Only difference is what they use to bind the drug together. So sometimes there's some differences because there's different binders or chemicals, not the uh, drug chemical itself, but other chemicals in there that sometimes people respond better to a generic or a brand or have an allergic reaction to one, not the other, because of binders that are put in it. That's when a provider can write um, dispense as written. If they do not specify that it has to be a brand name, a, uh, the generic has to be given because it's cheaper. So it has to be dispensed as written if the person specifically has a problem. And of course, over-the-counter, oh, over-the-counter drugs do not require prescription. And many of those drugs are drugs that had been um, started a brand, went to generic, was a prescription for a long time, and now can be obtained over-the-counter without prescription. So over-the-counter drugs. Nurses should consider several problems related to over-the-counter drug use. Taking these drugs could mask the signs and symptoms of an underlying disease, making it diagnosis difficult. Taking these drugs with prescription medication could result in drug interactions and fear interfere with drug therapy. Not taking the drugs as directed could result in serious overdoses. All these I've seen as we go through pharmacology, I will help point out certain over-the-counter drugs, what you need to watch for, why it's a problem. I do have a PowerPoint lecture put together on CAMS, which is complementary al complementary alternative medications that we will go through, but I've decided we're not going to cram that in at the end of the semester. We will do that uh, in the beginning of pharmacology and we'll talk some more about over-the-counter and interactions and stuff. So drug labels, which I'm sure you know from your, uh, what is it, your med math or whatever that course is called, and you've seen them in your clinicals. You haven't actually started dispensing, so I just put one in here. Drug products are identified and reporting using a, a unique three segment number called the National Drug Code, which you can see the drug code is right there. It's a product code. The FDA publishes the NDC or National Drug Code numbers and the information submitted is part of the listing information in a directory that is updated daily so that all the drugs and their ingredients and everything about them and trials has been um, is documented recorded so some things to think about check your knowledge tell whether the following statement is true or false groups of similar drugs all of which are derived from an original prototype are available today because of technological advances that make a particular drug more desirable in a specific situation. This is true. Technological advances have led to the development of groups of similar drugs, which we call generics, all of which are derived from the original prototype, which is the brand, but each has a slightly different properties, making the particular drug possibly more desirable in a certain situation. Drug labels are a source of information. What information might a drug label provide? A, the manufacture date. B, the expiration date. C, when the patient expires. D, the binding properties of the drug. The answer is B, the expiration date. Drug labels have specific information to identify a specific drug. It identifies the brand and generic names for the drug, the drug dose, the expiration date, and special drug warnings. Some labels will also include the route for the um, drug, that drug administration. 
Oh, it didn't go. Oh, was that the last? Oh, that was the last. Sorry. Okay, so that is the end of this lecture recording.